Hello, welcome to the first video for chapter 35. Um, so for this chapter, we'll have just two videos on a couple op optical instruments. We're not going to do everything in the chapter. Um, so things like telescopes and microscopes are definitely uh, important things, but we're not going to go over those. We're, we're going to focus on cameras in this video and then the human eye in the next one, um, just in the interest of time. So, <clears throat> so I have a, a question right here that has to do with um, a camera where maybe it's, it's a little bit more manual than just taking a picture with an iPhone, for instance. Um, so you're gonna learn about, um, so, so we're gonna introduce a few terms relevant to cameras. Um, so to, to understand this question, you need to know what the aperture diameter is. Uh, and basically it's just going to be, so, so you have a hole here that lets light in. So it's just how big, you know, what's the diameter of that hole that lets light in? Are you going to have to increase that or not um, as you zoom in to, to keep the same brightness? Okay. Okay. So, um, so your your book starts off this chapter by talking about lenses and combination. Uh, so this is relevant. Uh, well, you'll see why this is relevant. But to to ruin the surprise, you can change the effective focal length uh, of a lens by changing the distance between the two. Um, so what do I mean by that? Let's, let's see. Combining lenses. Um, so the general strategy for uh, what happens if you have two lenses is that you, so you have some object and you want to find out what the image is after it passes through the first one. Okay, so, so the overall Overall, what we want to do is, if we have two lenses, we want to see what the image is after light passes through both of these lenses. Okay, so everything in chapter 34 dealt with just a single lens. Um, so for this setup, though, and the way you, you normally want to analyze this is you, you take your object and you, so let's say the, the focus is here and here for this first lens. So first, you just want to find the image uh, as you normally would. So here are two of the principal rays. So it looks like we have we have an image that formed uh, right here. So it looks like it's a real inverted reduced uh, image. Okay, so that's the image. So right here, this is the image after the first uh, the first lens. But this acts as the object for the second lens. Also, this thing is the object for the second lens. Okay, so in other words, if you're if you were standing right here, um, all the light. So, so assuming light has gone through that first lens, all the light that you receive um, looks like it came from uh, this this tip of the arrow right here. Right. Uh, so all the light looks as though it emerged from this spot right here. Okay, so if you're looking at light that passed through here, you have no knowledge that this was the original object, right? This looks like the object. Um, so in particular, the light that goes through this lens right here, you have to treat this as the object. So this is going to this light ray is going to diverge away. So maybe I should start using a different uh, oops, uh, different color for the light that we're going to treat it after. Um, Okay, so now this is our object. Now this, we're just gonna treat as a whole other object. So this light ray is gonna diverge. So let's say that there's a focus there and there. Uh, and then this one passes right through. Um, so tracing this one back, it looks like we get an image right here. So it's reduced even more. So this is, so the, this, this uh, image right here, this is the image after um, this is the image when looking through both lenses. Okay, so in other words, if I'm over here, all the light that I receive looks like it came from this point right here. Okay, that's the image after passing through both. So the general strategy is you find the image after the first lens, that image becomes your object, and then that object will um, form a new image after the second lens. Okay, so in problems of this sort, um, 
So your book defines uh, what's called an effective focal length. Um, and it defines it in this example right here. A reasonable definition of the effective focal length of this lens combination is the focal length of a single lens that could produce an image in the same location if placed at the midpoint of the lens combination. Okay, so, um, so in order to analyze a problem of this sort, you're, you're going to start off with some distance right here between these two. Um, so we could have just, uh, instead of um, these two, uh, instead of these two lenses right here, we could have started off with our original object, put a single lens right here, right in the middle, and then it's going to produce an image that's equal to the, the final image of this, which is this right here. So the question is, well, what's, what's the effective, what, what lens would I have to put right here to get this image out from this object right here? Um, that's what we mean by effective focal length. So whatever this lens is right here that does that, that focal length is the effective focal length of this system. Um, so the reason this is relevant is that the, the effective focal length depends a little bit on this distance d. Um, so you can change the effective focal length of the, of the system by changing d. And that's how, actually, when we, when we analyze cameras later in this section, um, we can actually change the focal length. And you might wonder, well, how, how the heck could we change the focal length of a lens you know, if we're not carving, carving different pieces of, of glass? Uh, and the reason for that is that we can change this effective, we can change the length between these two lenses, and that changes the effective focal length. So your book goes through this calculation right here. It's a little, maybe a little too long for this video, but see, see the strategy here is they have, so the original object was way out here, way over on the left right here. Uh, so they found the image of the first lens, which acts as an object, but the object for the second lens. Okay, so the the first lens right there is diverging, so it produces a virtual reduced image, and that acts as the object for the second one, and you pass that image, which becomes now the object for the second lens, you pass that through the converging lens, and that forms a real image right there. Uh, so then your book calculates, well, overall, that that object formed a real image, uh, and so the effective focal length is positive, because overall these two acted like a single converging lens. Okay. Um, there's one fact, before we move on to the next section, there's one fact I want to I wanna mention. Um, if the distance between the two um, between the two lenses is small, if d is very small, so in other words, like if you had a converging lens and then right afterward you had a diverging lens, right? And this distance is very, very small. d is very small. So in other words, if you put two lenses right up next to each other, uh, then there's a nice equation for the effective focal length. Uh, and that is 1 over the effective focal length is 1 over uh, the focal length of the first one plus 1 over the focal length of the second one. So whichever focal length is smaller, so, so suppose you had a diverging and a converging lens right next to each other. Uh, does it overall act like a converging lens or a diverging lens? Well, which one, whichever one has a smaller focal length will win. Whichever one's smaller in magnitude. That's a smaller focal length means it's a stronger lens. So if D is not really, really small, if you can't ignore D compared to the sizes of the focal lengths, then uh, it's a little bit more complicated and it depends, your effective focal length depends on D. Um, so you might want to compare, like in this example, you could try to just plug it into that formula and you're going to get an F effective that's not quite 75 millimeters. It's going to be a little bit off because that, that distance isn't quite negligible. That distance is 60 millimeters right here. But if you redid the problem and instead of 60 millimeters between the two, it was uh, like one millimeter between the two, then you would, uh, you could very quickly get F effective. Okay. <clears throat> Cameras. Okay, so like I mentioned before, the, the reason this, this uh, previous bit was relevant was that we could change the focal length. So the, uh, a camera has multiple lenses. Uh, see right here, your, your book has a picture of the lens barrel. Um, so using the same two lenses, they just change the distance between those two lenses and it changes the focal, the focal point. It changes the focal length. Um, so 
It says right here, a typical digital camera has a lens whose effective focal length can be varied from six millimeters to 18 millimeters. Um, yeah, so, so that can actually change the zoom as, as we'll see. Um, so for a camera, Um, so, uh, one thing that we want to point out right here is that the, the, the magnification for the overall, uh, lens combination, uh, is minus S over S, sorry, minus S prime over S. Um, and, okay, so for a camera, a camera is very, very small compared to, uh, the light that you're trying to image. So the light rays are basically coming in parallel to your uh, to your camera. Um, so in other words, S is very very big. S is basically equal to uh, it approaches infinity. Right. So so we're going to deal with so so as your your book mentioned, we're going to deal with focal lengths that are like six to eighteen millimeters. Right. The size of it, the camera. A camera lens is very, very small compared to what you're taking a picture of, you know, how far away your, your object is of what you're taking a picture of. So from the lens equation, if S approaches infinity, we can get rid of that term in the lens equation, and F is approximately equal to S prime. So as a result, this equation becomes, if we replace S prime with F, this is minus F over S, And so assuming your, your object is at a fixed distance away from your camera, you can change the magnification by changing the focal length. Okay, so the key result out of this is M, the magnification, which is how zoomed in you are, right? The, the more you zoom into something, the bigger your image is. So the magnification is proportional to the focal length. So that's one key result that uh, we want to know for a camera. Okay. So in order to zoom in, we need to increase the focal length, right? So we need to change our, our distance between these lenses in order to increase the effective focal length. Okay. And as, as your book pointed out, you can actually uh, increase the focal length by a factor of three. So this gives you a three times zoom. Um, okay. So another thing, um, that I want you to be aware of for cameras is uh, this thing called F number. So the reason for this is, um, so this has to do with, um, so brightness, exposure, um, this is going to relate to this thing called F number, and that also relates to uh, the aperture diameter. Um, so what's the best? Hmm. So let's, um, okay, so let's, let's say we have a camera lens. Um, so, and we're really, really zoomed in here. So, so like the, remember the focal length for a camera is very, very small. So that focal length is really, really small. So, so you have an object that's coming from very, very far away. So the light rays are basically parallel right here. Um, so what, the, what a camera does is if you have an object that's very, very far away, so like we mentioned before, the image is located very close to the focal point. It's gonna be a little bit after that, but you're gonna form a real image. So this light is gonna be focused on a screen that's right behind the focal point. Okay, so this is there's a screen right here. Um, detector. So this used to be film, but now there are um, fancy digital cameras where you you have uh, you know CCD um, for for the collector right here. Okay, so whatever you're imaging right here. Um, it's going to be a very, very small image right here. Um, and that image size is going to be proportional to this focal length. So this is F right here. 
and the size of this arrow is going to be proportional to f. That's what we're saying because this is so this, uh, the object is so far away. Um, okay, so the so I want to mention what happens to the brightness of the the image right here. Okay, so brightness. Um, the brightness is going to be proportional to 1 over f squared. So why is that? Um, so keep in mind that the screen right here is going to be two-dimensional. right? There, there's actually a whole, whole screen right here. And so whatever the image is right here, it's spread out over, over 2D. So suppose I, I increase the focal length by a factor of 2. Okay? That means that this arrow would increase by a factor of 2 in size. Um, that's for each length dimension. So, so the, the arrow would get bigger, and then it would also be twice as wide right here, too. Um, you know, if there was some width of the arrow. So the area of the arrow being projected onto the screen is going to be four times bigger. That means the same, if, the, if we let the same amount of light through the camera, the more that light is spread out over, the smaller the intensity. Um, and in other words, the, the dimmer the light is. Right. So, um, so in addition to the, the focal length being relevant for the brightness, what's also relevant is how much light we let in. Right. So there's actually a small opening here for a camera lens um, that's the, the aperture diameter. Okay. So this is going to be capital D is the diameter right here. So this is how much light we're letting in. Aperture diameter. So for in general, if we uh, aperture diameter d. Uh, so this is going to control how much light we we bring in, and that's exactly what this picture is right here. So that there's a hole controlling how much light we're letting in. Uh, and if we zoom in, because that because this image is getting spread out and getting dimmer, that light is getting spread out in area, we want to let more light in. So brightness, in addition to being proportional to f 1 over f squared, it's also going to be proportional to the amount of light we let in, which is going to be proportional to the diameter squared. Right? It's going to be proportional to the area of that hole. And area is proportional to r squared or diameter squared. So uh, in camera lingo, uh, they call this thing, so this quantity f over d is called f number. So this is also 1 over something called f number squared. So uh, this quantity f number is equal to, it's defined to be the ratio f over d. Um, so this is a, by the way, this is a unitless number. Uh, and to make things even more confusing, they, they just, uh, so a lot of times they, they a, a camera will write the diameter, it'll, it'll write the F number on the bottom, so like this right here. So F over 4 would be, would mean that the F number is 4. Okay, so let me give an example right here. So example, F over 4. Um, So if you see that written on a lens, means um, the diameter, the aperture diameter is f over 4. Or in other words, 4 is equal to f over d, is the f number. So there's a lot of lingo with the camera stuff. Um, so if you ever see f divided by something, um, they're telling you how big the, the uh, you can think of that, you could just set that equal to the aperture diameter. Uh, and that's telling you what that f number is. So in a lot of problems, you might be told, you know, that you're changing something, but you're holding the f number constant. Um, so, and the reason, by the, by the way, the, the reason I'm, I keep saying aperture diameter is that some cameras also say aperture when they actually mean f number. Um, yeah, the lingo the lingo is really confusing here. So so cameras will also call this 
so camera enthusiasts, uh, people, <laughs> call this aperture. Um, so, so I'm, I will always say aperture diameter equals, you know, some number of meters. Remember, aperture diameter is a number of meters. This F number, or what uh, camera enthusiasts call just the aperture, is a unitless number. Uh, that's the ratio of the F over F over D. Um, yeah, pretty confusing. <laughs> uh, so let's go back to, so let's apply this to our problem. Suppose you took a picture and it's the right brightness, but too, but you want to zoom in. You know, it's too zoomed out. You want to zoom in. Um, for your next pic, should you increase the aperture diameter or not? So let's see what needs to happen. If we want to zoom in, remember we want to increase the magnification. Uh, so we want to increase the focal length. Okay. So so back to our, our original problem. We want to increase M, so therefore we want to increase uh, the focal length. Right? Increasing M and increasing focal length are the same thing for a camera. Now, if we were at the right brightness, then this is a bad thing. Right? See how brightness is proportional to d squared over f squared? So if we increase the focal length, our, our picture is going to get dimmer unless we let more light in. So we also want, in addition to this, to keep the same brightness, or in other words, to keep the same exposure. Um, to keep the same brightness, we want to uh, increase the diameter, increase the aperture diameter. So if we want to zoom in twice, you know, so uh, twice as much. Um, so if we want the magnification to be 2, then we want to increase f by a factor of 2, and therefore we have to increase d by a factor of 2 as well to keep the brightness the same. Okay. Um, so increasing, so changing the diameter isn't the only way. Uh, so this is, um, so I might have lied to you here. Uh, this is actually intensity, not brightness. So the actual brightness of your photo is going to depend on the intensity times how much time you use to collect light. So the brightness of your photo is going to be intensity times time, where it's going to be proportional to uh, d squared over f squared times delta t. All right. So in other words, what uh, another thing I could do is, so for this problem right here, another thing I could do is I could uh, zoom in, not change the aperture diameter, but just collect uh, collect light for four times as long. So suppose I zoomed in, zoom in by a factor of two, um, that will decrease the intensity by a factor of four. So I need to uh, have the shutter time uh, be four times longer, uh, or in other words, shutter, shutter speed would have to decrease by a factor of four. So that can be dangerous with a camera because if you uh, so if you take too long with the shutter, um, your picture not, might not be in focus. Right? If you're moving the camera around and it's taking a long time to try and focus the image, then it might be blurry. Um, so so in general, if you want to. Uh, um, a crisp photo you want it to be taken pretty pretty quickly um, if, if you're moving the camera around. Uh, so in the description I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put a link to um, something by Canon that has you play with uh, taking some practice pictures and you can change things like the um, the shutter time or shutter speed so higher shutter speed means smaller shutter time. Uh, you can change the focal length or the or equivalently the magnification uh, or you can change what they call the aperture, but for us that's the f number. Okay, so so you you can you can get a you can play with these things and see what what each, each of these things does to a picture. Uh, I think it's pretty interesting actually to to see what goes on. 
Okay, so we'll get a uh, specific, pro we'll do some particular problems about this in class, but this is just an introduction to, to cameras.